afternoon. This is Bill Gross, the LA probate expert. And this is our Thursday afternoon probateweekly.com probate call. We get together with um, investors, wholesalers, real estate agents, attorneys, vendors uh, to learn about and how to work better together in the space of uh, probate real estate. I'm a real estate broker in Los Angeles, California. My name is Bill Gross. And I founded this call. Um, I started focusing on probate about three years ago. And then when COVID came and um, closed down the courthouse. I used to have a, a meetup at the courthouse and would have people come and meet there. Um, and when the courthouse closed up to where we couldn't do that anymore, uh, we moved this to online. And so we do this call every Thursday at four o'clock live, uh, four o'clock Pacific time. And then we live stream it on YouTube and Facebook, uh, as well as record it for those who miss it when to catch it another time. Now, I will say that my, my goal or my dream of this is to be interactive, to have people who are, want to learn. And I think by participating, you learn more, you ask questions. If, if you have a question unanswered, then, then uh, somebody else uh, is going to be curious about the same thing. Um, unfortunately, last few weeks, we've had uh, some people come in mis mischievously and Zoom bomb us, um, which sounds like fun, but can be very obscene and upsetting to people. And so... We changed the procedure to work people coming into the call are automatically muted and have to ask to be unmuted. So if you hit the button to unmute yourself or ask to be unmuted or have a question put in the chat box or raise your hand, I'm glad to make it as participative as possible because I think at the end of the day, I want this to be interesting and the only way to know that is to have people uh, interact. And so I know for me, I can invite a lot of webinars that are pre-recorded. They're kind of boring and I watch them when I want. Um, and you want to stop them and, and start them. There's no reason to do it live. The reason we want to do this live is because as a real estate broker, and my guests will not always know everything that we want to learn. Uh, and the other option is if your video is on, if you raise your hand, now I can't see everybody. That's the other problem with the way this is kind of set up is uh, um, I can only see the people in the top row at one time. So again, if you, if I know you, I'm glad to unmute you. Um, if you just ask to be muted, or if you put something in the chat box, or if you use the Facebook to raise your hand, um, I'm glad to do that. So there's many people participative. Um, and I also just want to share, share up front, the purpose of this is to help us be more effective in uh, building income and wealth, whether you be a real estate agent or investor or wholesaler or professional or a family. We get petitioners who come on here as well to learn how to be more effective with their process along the way. But again, it's meant to be um, as participative as possible. I don't sell anything. I don't sell a coaching program. I don't sell any data. I often refer people to programs because I get asked all the time where to find data. I guess I'll, I'll get asked all the time how to learn about how, more about probate. And I get asked about coaching. And so I'm glad to make those referrals when I'm asked. And again, if you ask questions in the chat box, raise your hand. Uh, if I see you on video, I'm glad to try to catch you that way too. Um, and we'll participate. Okay, so today our guest... I wonder if it's a time zone problem. Let me just double check. I thought I had that today confirmed, but I don't see him. Uh, uh, Riley Stan, are you there? Maybe under a different name on your Zoom account? I don't see. Oh, there he is. He just came in. One second. We'll get our guest in here. Become a co host. Just a mute and I just see you just got in and want to unmute you and uh, make you a co-host. If you want to share anything, you're welcome to. Yes. Are you there? I'm there here. You hello. Hello. Good to be so here. Hold Hold on, let me find you here on this spot and add you to the spotlight. There you are. Fantastic. Look at you with a high-tech background. So I'm really nice. excited to bring to our call today. You missed all the tea up. Uh, but again, I just said to everybody, if you, um, uh, if you um, have questions, put in the chat box, raise your hand in the, in the Zoom. Um, and, or if I know you, ask to unmute yourself. I'm glad to unmute you and keep you, give you the ability to unmute yourself. That's fine. But again, just avoid, uh, for security reasons, we have to keep people by default onto mute. Really excited to have a special guest. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a broker and I focus on probate in Los Angeles, California, but I often get um, requests from attorneys or families who have property in multiple states or have family members in other states and look for referrals. And so part of the reason I did this call was to build a network and relationships with professionals, agents, as well as vendors and attorneys in other states. And so 
as I searched in Arizona, I came across a guy who I thought was really interesting, kind of a fun person to talk to, as well as very knowledgeable professionally, Rallis Dana. So Rallis, thank you and welcome to our call. Hi, thanks, Bill. Thanks for having me. Um, really glad to be here. Um, I became aware of you, um, I guess, probably through YouTube, I guess. So, but really enjoyed your your content and looks like I'm not focusing for some reason. There we go. Turn up my lights. Um, I was just meeting people in real life. So I got to shift back to um, more of the studio mode. So you see that because I today I had uh, I work at a home office now. I have an office in Beverly Hills, but I work primarily at the home office. The Beverly Hills office is kind of closed down with COVID and all. I had two different customers in my office, uh, my home office today. My wife was like, "What's going on?" I said, "Oh, we got business coming in." You know, this one was a petitioner, and this one was an investor who's got a probate deal. So I guess we're kind of we're kind of forcing our way back into real life somehow, right? Yeah, so I've been um, really like 21 last year. I was I was back to real life, um, oh, wow. especially in Arizona. So um, I'm licensed in California too, but my practice is primarily in Arizona. It seems like I get most of my California clients through my Arizona network, where they own property there or have things that um, connect. But yeah, people. Um, the, the first of last year was really interesting because it was the people that don't know how to zoom, right? <laughs> so that was the first wave of people that uh, you know they're they're waiting to get in. So it was kind of an interesting crowd. It was, and then you know it, I remember before the pandemic, um, I used to use Zoom and try to get you sign, and all of a sudden at some point everybody knew how to zoom and everybody knew how to use DocuSign or eSign and just made my life a lot easier. So uh, well, give us a little background. How did, where'd you grow up and how'd you get to Arizona and how'd you get into uh, law? Yeah, so grew up in Mesa, Arizona. And uh, my dad was an estate planning attorney. So during college, I got introduced to the business and I enjoyed helping people and thought that it was cool. And then I realized, um, I realized um, all the wealth that the baby boomers have and that the mortality rate is 100%. So I thought that wealth transfer would be a good place to um, devote my career to, you know, to, to studying estate planning. So I studied business, I studied business management at Arizona State. So I always knew I wanted to get in the business of running a law firm. And I feel like law as a profession is kind of behind, like the bar is pretty low. Like uh, as far as, um, like to be a good attorney, the bar is pretty low. Like there's, um, I, I, I joke and it's true. Like our, the way we get clients is number one, we answer our phone and two, be nice. Really just comes <laughs> down to that. It's pretty, uh, pretty simple. Wow. Wow. So. Well, you know, it's funny. My father was an attorney as well. And he described himself as an old school attorney. Um, he passed the bar on my birthday in 1959. Um, and you know they weren't allowed to do any advertising in those days, so all they could do was uh, maybe be a public service and, and get a name out there personally, and then uh, word of mouth would spread and help. So, so your father was a state planning attorney, and you um, followed into that. What, what was it about the state planning that appealed to you? Besides the fact, I guess there's some business there and, and all that, but there are other attorneys who don't follow their father's footsteps. What was it to you that was appealing to you? And so, I, I like the um, the helping people and the problem solving aspect to it. Um, you know, just today, one of my clients was um, a surviving spouse, and she has one of the old AB trusts, right? I, I say old because usually people update them. This was done in 2008 and, and not updated. But anyways, it, it was fun to show her ways where basically she could maneuver to do anything she wants, you know, even though there may have been other intent, but they didn't close all the, all the holes, as I would say. So, um, so, so I enjoy that, just kind of the problem solving aspect of it. And there's always something new. Um, I enjoy getting to meet all different types of people. You know, I've had, you know, clients of all different ranges from, you know, you name a profession and, and um, I've had the, the privilege of getting to know someone in that profession, probably it. So, you know, I, I can tell somebody who's in the business uh, because uh, typical attorneys or Realtors complain about problems. Probate attorneys, probate realtors brag about the problems that they solve. So it's just interesting how you approach that. Do you? How is your practice set up? Uh, what percentage is the state planning avoiding probate, and what percentage is probate administration and litigation things like that? 
Yeah. So um, probably um, close to 50, 50, I would say. So I do, um, you know, estate planning, I do probate, you know, probate mostly in Arizona. I, I do, um, um, I've done enough California probates to know I hate them. So I generally don't get into uh, California probates. Uh, I don't really do litigation. I have a couple. So Arizona, usually we do what's called an informal probate, where if no one can test, we just open it up without a hearing. Um, if someone, um, if they're not in agreement who the personal representative is, I'll do a, a formal probate. But if it really gets to fighting, I have them bring in other counsel to do the, the litigation. So probably about, um, maybe may about 40% of my practice is probate and trust administration and 60% is new planning or, or close to 50-50. Do you see people more interested or agreeable to the idea of estate planning now than when you started your practice or is it still, you know, uh, still some resistance to that process? Um, it's funny. I, I get all types of people and I love doing YouTube. I think it's kind of like what radio used to be. Right. Um, I remember, um, my dad used to have a radio show and, um, the type of people that would come in for that. I mean, not to stereotype clients, there's all different types of people. Right. But sometimes more of the do it yourselfers, right. Mm -hmm. Where they, sometimes their minds already made up and they want to call you and they just want confirmation. So I, I had a prospective client the other day. And um, I, I could already tell it, it wasn't um, like a good, like a good client or because he didn't, he didn't do our, um, our first little intake, right? He wouldn't tell me like if he was married or if he had kids or what the assets are, because I like to start with specifics, not like what if, what if. And he asked me about his parents' estate plan, like if what they had was sufficient. And um, and then he's like, I'm not trying to spend you know, thousands of dollars on attorney fees. And I said, I'm not trying to sit here and answer questions for free either. <laughs> <laughs> and then he quickly hung up after that. But uh, there you go. hey, you win some, you lose some. Some people want to do it on their own. You know, that's why they have do-it-yourself stuff. And I think that's, uh, uh, you know, I, I never get anybody tells me I did it myself and it was so easy. I'm glad I did it. It's always, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. It would be probate or, or real estate. Um, you know, we all work hard at what we do, I think, but um, yeah, some people need to do it on their own. So it's, it's interesting how law has changed. You know, you said you brought up how attorneys weren't even allowed to advertise, right? So the, you see how laws change and then, so, right. So I, I, I started my dad's firm, you know, about 2002 in college. So as the internet was getting more popular and legal zoom was coming in and attorneys didn't know what to think of this. Right. So they, um, um, they, they weren't used to people asking questions. You know, the older attorneys didn't have to be good. They could just, um, they held all the information. You know, so things have really shifted uh, since that technology. Yeah, I, you know, in all the industries, right? In real estate as well as law, the technology both has disintermediated us or attempted to replace us, but it's also empowered us, right? The same technology that creates legal zoom. I'm sure it makes your documents and your process potentially more efficient, less expensive uh, as well. It's, but you have to use it. You have to learn how to make it work for you, right? Yeah. So I, I feel like what's changed in the legal industry, like I'm, I'm grateful for legal Zooms, right? Because I make more money putting the toothpaste back in the tube, right? <laughs> You're figuring out how to clean up mistakes right. and unintended consequences. Because those the fill in the blank documents are only as good as you fill in the blanks, and right. you don't know what you don't know. And right. I think also it's, it's highlighted, like you know, I shared that that call that didn't go well. You know, I'm 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 happy to help people in the first meeting if they're if they're willing to to spend the time to to talk specifics. I'll help regard this as much as possible and tell them what I recommend, mm -hmm. um, and and help out. Um, but we're a service-based business. I, I think it's highlighted that, right? So if people that, you know, my, my target clientele, they, they appreciate the value of a, of a professional and they want the peace of mind. Now, a lot of people can do things themselves. I, I'm not against that, but what it comes down to is, are you going to have the peace of mind? You know, do you have the time that it takes to devote to it? And, um, you know, do you have enough, I, it, you know, do you have enough capacity, right? It, it's sad to say, but I know like 
I, I always compare it to like mechanics. Like I, I go to get my car fixed and they're like, oh, it's really easy. You just grab this tool, that tool, blah, blah, blah. And I'm right. like, Oof, like, no way that's, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting how law has changed. I think it's just highlighted more of a service business, right? And, and that's kind of where I think it connects and probably why I'm here today is I've gotten kind of obsessed with this, um, you know, creative financing and real estate world. You know, as a probate attorney, I enjoy working with real estate professionals that are able to solve problems and, and help people and, and find solutions. And that's really what um, I think is never going to go out of style. There's always going to be a need for that. Yeah, there's always something that will take care of the bulk, middle, easier cases. And then that makes the ones on the outside more viable is how I look at it. That, that, that there's only so many people who can handle that problem. I was on a uh, probate uh, referred me today by an attorney and there's a ex-wife and a brother and their relations aren't ideal. And, and, and uh, the, the ex-wife was thanking me for being so patient with her. I said, well, that's really my job. I mean, if it's just paperwork, Amazon or Google or you know, Apple would do it, right? It's not just paperwork. It's dealing with human beings and getting the paperwork lined up and earning your trust and being patient is one way to do that. So definitely part of it. So how, tell, tell us a bit about your business. How do you, obviously you've been around for a while, your father had a business, you've, you've, you're around as well. Does, do you generate business from your YouTube? Do you generate business on social media? Is it more a matter of a way that you keep in touch with your clients? How do you generate business? Yeah. So it's like, <coughs> um, all, all the things, huh? There's like so many things. So I, I ended up purchasing some of the pieces of the firm from my dad, um, you know, af after law school. So there is some existing client base. Um, uh, of the new clients, about half the clients are really um, referrals from existing clients. So that's always our, our best source of new clients is, sure. is, is referrals. And then I do, um, I say all the things, you know, some pay-per-click. I, I just started doing a, a mailing campaign, uh, but for, I've been doing pay-per-click for a long time. I don't do it myself. I have people that, that run the campaigns. Um, I do a little bit of print in some local neighborhoods. I do like in their print, uh, uh, newsletters and um, SEO. So regular blog posts. I have a team that helps me put out regular content. And then I, I try to do regular YouTube videos or just create uh, videos that way. So, but really it's a combination of all those other things that bring in, um, you know, the other, you know, a half of new clients, I would say. So it sounds like you're pretty focused on the business side of your business, right? In the old days, you were just an attorney and you just handled pleadings and cases and appearances. But as a um, business owner today, what percentage of your business do you think is running a business and what percentage is just law and technical legal you know, skill work? Yeah, so I definitely enjoy the business aspect of it. Mm, interesting. Um, I'm, 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 I'm pretty proud of the operation that I've designed. So I, I created this company, uh, Mott Legal. So the, the binders mm -hmm. that I, um, that I give for the estate planning, you know, come from that company and actually the software mm -hmm. that I use when meeting with clients. So if you see that attorney login in the top, that's, that's where I log in and it kind of manages the process. So the, the, the clients, they'll get a, a, a secure link where they can input their personal inventory there. Um, so, wow. so lately I've, I've been busy in the business, which is a good thing. You know, because my my goal, my goal is to have 12 new initial clients a week. And then um, about so to do that and, and service that many clients, I have about that many um, other meetings a week. Um, you know, do, uh, other law firm, you know, with clients. So about 25 to 30 hours of my week is with clients. And then about oh. five hours <clears throat> is internally with my team. And um, so actually not a whole lot of time on the business. So now that things are kind of, you know, running and I have, I kind of use the analogy and it's probably a lot of you guys will agree with this, but it's like just always trying to keep all the balls in the air, right? All, you know, right. all the things, you'll get back to that person, that person, you're waiting for this or that. So. Right. Uh, well, I think real estate agents and, and probably the same with attorneys, you, your goal is try, is try to set up a system that can kind of run on its own while you do your job. And then eventually you add another system or you enhance that system. But for me, marketing is something that ha should happen without me doing it. You know, I, I this this calls an example 
well, I do the call, but everything else that happens about it, I'm not really involved anymore. I don't drive the traffic to signups. I don't send the reminders out. I, you know, somebody does that, and and hopefully it runs. You know, I go to sleep at night and then show up here next week, and there's more people here. And, and so the same sounds like it's true with you. You're running SEO. You're doing um, other other uses of your time. So let's talk about you know working with um, with real estate agents because our business is for the most part most people on call are, are real estate related one way investors wholesalers real estate agents. Do you get business from realtors? Do they bring you cases that need help? Do you refer out? How, what's the ra- the ratio? That seems like more realtors seem to think that a trade should be referring the business, but I think it's more the other way that realtors find cases and need to work with an attorney effectively to get the business solved. Uh, yes. Yeah. Both of those things. So um, here, here's how not to work with attorneys. Don't um, don't watch their CLE events and then call the state bar and say you don't like something on there. <laughs> so oh, no. thanks for uh, that. That's no. a, so that shouldn't, uh, shouldn't have to say that. But now I'm going to start saying that. Um, but um, uh, yeah, real, realtors are a great source uh, of legal business because they're often the, the primary contact. Right, they're often the trusted advisor uh, that they bring in the attorney. Right, they're the ones that knows what probate is. They know that something needs to be done, you know, in order to sell the house because title is right. still in the name of uh, someone who's deceased. Right. So I um they're they're a great source that way. And then when we do probates and trust administration, you know, we often need to to liquidate assets and and we need people to. Uh, to help families deal with all types of situations. So I work with realtors and, and I, I like working with people that have, um, um, that can also provide other options as well, like potentially a wholesale and maybe some cr- uh, creative financing options mm-hmm. uh, so they can have a little bit more uh, tools if needed. The coach got me into probate um, in a big way, <clears throat> Chad Corbett, uh, kind of shout out to him, uh, Probate Mastery. Um, you know, it really talks about having as full a uh, list of tools as possible. And the, the role then of the real estate agent is to, you know, find out what the family's problem is or the attorney's problem and then offer the appropriate tool to solve the problem. And so I would say either I, either I have a guy or I'll get a guy or I have a gal or I'll get a gal, but my job is to solve the problem. And if I don't have a solution, my job is to find the solution and fix it that way uh, and make that my business. So. Sounds like you deal with that. Explain to give me an example if you can of a of a um, creative financing deal or a wholesale deal that you used in probate that helped you solve a problem. Is one that comes to mind? Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. Chad's great. Um, I think that's kind of how I b- became a part of this community. I really like his his approach and and what he teaches. And I feel like it's um, it's good for the attorney side, right? As an as an attorney, I feel like that's a a, a good approach. Um, exa- so I had clients where they had no credit. They had a, there was a house that had to be sold that they were living in and there's some other beneficiaries and they didn't have any credit for whatever reason. Um, and so they were concerned that they'd never be able to own a house again. Right. Um, so I, I brought in, um, this is my, my friend, uh, Pace Morby also introduced me to this world. Oh, wow. And uh, so I, I say a lot of people like me because of Pace. So a lot of people love me because of Pace where, you know, some of that is, um, like this people, uh, he was able to help them find um, uh, a seller finance deal, basically, that Imagine they could that. purchase. Imagine that. He's so, the expert of that. That's his yeah, specialty. Yeah. So so to these people, like, I'm great because they, they got this solution through through Pace. So so that was one example where... Um, um, and then, and then Pace, and then I've worked with some other, um, uh, some people, um, some of his other students um, and other people through his network, but the, they'll show up to houses and they'll, um, they'll, they'll FaceTime with people as an example. That's not a creative solution necessarily, but that's just, um, I guess, being available and being willing to help. But um, creative finance also where I see, um, I've seen kids where they, um, there's a mortgage and they're inheriting a house subject to the mortgage. And it gets a little sticky because, you know, technically what, what the contract says and what actually happens is kind of a different thing, you know, meaning like the acceleration clause, it, it's always in there, but it's rarely, um, rarely an issue. So I've had um, like some of Pace's students where they'll help people uh, navigate that process, you know, whether just for themselves, right? So they can 
uh, continue to stay in the house and not be concerned about the mortgage until they can qualify or, or do something else? For the record, I liked you before I knew you were involved with Pace Morby. For the record, yeah, I think I found you. But I will say I'm impressed that you work with him and know the process. That he's a legend, and for anybody who does know who he is, you should research him. Uh, he is the master of, I think, creative financing and seller financing. And uh, <clears throat> I've taken his classes. He's he's phenomenal. Yeah, um, so I, I I met him. Um, I thought he was just like one other uh, investor. It's like yeah, whatever, whatever, dude. <laughs> And uh, I, really? I helped him uh, record some of his um, probate courses for his uh, sub two mentorship. I've had the privilege of getting to, uh, to know him over the years and um, wow. um, uh, super smart dude. And he's got so much drive too. It's crazy how much he just go, go, goes. Um, but yeah, learned, learned a lot from him. And then really, I, I, I think what can be learned for this community is um, you know, what he said, you know, when he first met me, he, he knew that I had other relationships, right? Other uh, real estate relationships. He said, give me your hard stuff. Give me the stuff that no one wants. You know, yeah. give me the stuff where no one can help. Yeah. And I, I called him on it, basically. I, I, I did have some, you know, uh, mobile homes that, you know, my traditional people, you know, didn't want to help with at all. Um, he was able to help out with those. I had things like out of town that he drove to for me and for my clients you know, some weird, weird, scary houses. He sent me these videos. It's like, where'd you, where'd you send me to? Um, <laughs> but, um, and, and he was, he truly wasn't expecting anything is, is what I could see. Right. So, so as the attorney, um, I, I'm, I'm sure they all do this. Right. I think everyone kind of does this. Right. It's like, yeah, I, I have so many people, I get probably four or five uh, things a week from, from realtors who are, you know, wanting to, to be my person, you know, they're telling me why they're the best. Um, but, but I saw where he was, you know, actually helping and willing to do things and, and really not expecting anything. So putting into the investing in the relationship before you expect something out of it. And I think so much of the probate coaching is backwards. They'll tell you to buy the data, the probate filings and cold call attorneys. And for some people it works, you know, it, 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 a blind squirrel finds an acorn once in a while. But I, that isn't the relationship that I want to have. I want to have somebody who wants me to help them. And um, you know, as I tell the attorneys that work with me, I'll kill for them. I mean, I, I had a guy who had a, um, he had a client who's a huge financial company. I can't even say who they are. <clears throat> but he had two little teeny lots of land out in the high desert in California. I said, I'm glad to do those for you. If it's your problem, let me solve it. Uh, let me get you on to some good business that we'll both make some money on. And so that's about building relationships. Um, okay, in between my coughing here, you're really covering some great stuff for us as agents um, about putting uh, into the, the business before you get out of it. Um, have you worked with the same people for a long period of time or does it over time, do some people come, some people go, some people mature, some people move? How do, what, tell me what it looks like your business over the last five years. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of fluid, I would say, right? It, it, it's kind of fluid. It, 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 it comes and goes, who's taking the best care of my people? who's wanting to handle cases like that, who's sending me business is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I am, um, um, you know, all relationships being equal, I'm looking to, you know, who's bringing uh, legal clients and legal business into my door. And that's usually who's on, on the top of my list. Sure. You know, all, 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 uh, that's also true for Pace and other people, you know, basically everyone that I have worked with, has has brought me legal clients as well so it's kind of a kind of a two-way thing right. so i because i want to keep those relationships that are that are bringing me clients so i tell i coach real estate agents every day and i get phone calls from agents who are almost in tears you know i i followed this coaching program i bought the data i spent three hours a day i cold call these uh, personal representatives i mailed out postcards now i have no money what do i do to get business and i would say to them the first thing you should do is call everybody you already know and ask them, do they have an estate plan? Because if they have one, well, who's the attorney that did it? And find out, and then you can refer to that attorney. Now you know one you can refer to. If they don't have one, you need to find somebody to, you know, you ask them the question, do you understand the value or the purpose of getting an estate plan, how important it is when you own property? And now you have maybe somebody to refer to an attorney uh, for business up front. And that's the number one way to get started. And it's like realtors go, yeah, but that's a lot of work. I'm calling a lot of people. I won't get business for so long. 
But isn't that just really the right approach? I mean, am I, am I off base here? Tell me, it sounds like what you're telling me, which is you got to kind of put something in, prime the pump to get something out of it. Now, this, these personal representatives, they get bombarded. They get bombarded. And usually they have a relationship before already or, um, or they end up working with the, um, one of the attorney's guys. I, I met someone at um, you know, some, uh, some event in Phoenix and he's telling me about, uh, I think it was a deal in New Jersey. And he's like, I think the attorneys took the deal. <laughs> and I was like, I think you're right. You know, where, you know, cause they end up, they opened up probate and they ended up going with, um, you know, then this uh, investor never heard from them again. Well, so that's why it's so important to have a good, a good relationship with, with the attorney. You know, they're going to want to work with who they feel comfortable with and, and who's on their team. And, um, uh, but yeah, these, um, yeah, this, the personal representatives that they get bombarded with, with stuff. I, I know because I, I get bombarded, you know, just, just being the attorney of record, you know, on, on the probates, you know, I, I, I don't answer my phone unless I know the number because I get, I get bombarded and I get texts and I get offers. Um, so, um, um, I, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity and working with the probate attorneys and the probate law firms, but it's how you get in there. So I would say the, the number one way is you bring them a client. That's a guaranteed way in, right? Bring them a client, exactly what they're looking for. And you'll start to earn the trust that way. Uh, the other way, I, I think a good way is you walk in and in person, you know, and, and you know, invest in some, some cookies or, or whatever from a local bakery, you know, and the attorneys are, they get too much attention, find their paralegal. They don't get enough attention. <laughs> exactly. So, so go to the paralegal and say, Hey, I know you're doing all the hard work anyways. You're, you're the one that I want to get to know. I brought these cookies here for you or ask the front desk, you know, as far as you get, you know, ask them who the probate paralegal is, make sure that they get these, you know, do, can I take one of their cards? Um, probate yeah. paralegals like me because I solve a lot of problems for them. Yeah. So. Yeah, that that is definitely a hot tip. You know, as much as I like the attorneys I work with and maybe take them to lunch and stuff, I always have to do something for the paralegal and, and show their proper appreciation because they're the ones who do who really pick the vendor. The attorney at the end of the day doesn't care that much. They're focused on on the making the customer happy. But if it's the paralegal who's been delegated that job of, of doing those things. So definitely good news. Yeah. So my my um, paralegal, she manages my real estate relationships <laughs> now. And that's well, evolved naturally because she's like, oh, should we send it to this person? Or, you know, because she knows the different types of problems that people can solve for us. Isn't that interesting? And nobody's selling that database. That really requires you to meet you, go to your office, see who they are. Maybe go on your website, do some research, call or, or you know, send business. So you'll learn who they are that way for sure. Um, I got a question from Augie, which was, uh, do you invest in self-development uh, or is a particular reading program you have to help keep you, I, I imagine both motivated as well as up to date in your material, in your industry. Um, uh, no, thanks, Augie. That, that, that's great. That not 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 really. Um, uh, keep me motivated. I guess it's YouTube University. Um, I, I'm a fan of Mike Zuber as well. One rental at a time, and mm. I had the opportunity of going on there as a guest. I I like his this daily financial news. He gives like a financial headlines. I, I like little, that like Zuber. Yeah, Zuber, Z U B E R, uh, one rental at a time. Okay. So, um, so his story is is um, he lives in the Bay Area of California, and he is he and his wife both replace their jobs with uh, rental real estate. Nice. And he's um he's he's a CPA. He's an uh, an accountant by background and worked in the tech industry, but um you know also a real estate investor. Uh, but but he has a community where um, you know it's all people helping each other and like Pace Morby's community. I, I would say there's places like that. I, I like being around um, other um, other investors and other like you know other um, entrepreneurs, right? People that are out there and um, you know creating things is is exciting to me. Nice, very good. Okay, <clears throat> Amos has a question. Feel free to put in the chat box or raise your hand. We, we used to have everybody unmuted and we allowed that to, um, to be an easier way just to speak up. And fortunately with the security or our, our, our 
call getting more popular, we got Zoom bomb. Anybody have any particular questions that I can uh, ask to Rylas for you? Um, how do you spell the second name? Uh, Pace Morby, P-A-C-E Morby, M-O-R-B-Y. And the other name he had was uh, Mike Zuber, Z-U-B-E-R, one rental at a time. I'll put in um, in the chat, I'll put in my, my best contact. Great. Which is uh, my first and last name.com, right? This data.com. It's kind of like a business card website, but that has links to, uh, to my law firm where I practice law in Arizona and California. Uh, to Mott Legal, which is resources for attorneys. So I, I'd appreciate you sharing that to, to attorneys in your network, especially. Because I'm trying to show attorneys how much value there is from this, from this, um, from real estate community. How you know by leveraging relationships, it can increase their law practice, right? It's you know providing more uh, more value to clients. I I, I use my my uh, real estate relationships for uh, prospective clients a lot of times, right? Um, I like what you said. You 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 got to lead with, with value first before you can can expect anything. So. Um, I told you our formula won't answer the phone to be nice. So, you know, the, the people that hire us are people that appreciate service. You know, we're, we're not the cheapest. So, but if they've, if they've called us and someone's answered and they've had a good experience, um, you know, when they go to the other people in the low cost, you know, I, I had someone recently, they, they went with another low cost, uh, probate attorney. And I saw months later, I'm like, how's that going? They're like, horrible. <laughs> they haven't called, they haven't, they haven't done anything. And it's like, oh, right. Mm, right. weird, funny. <laughs> Imagine that. Right. So the, the Mott Legal is services for the, uh, for the attorney. And so I, that feels I need, I see, you know, the old days, I think there were fewer large law firms, like every other business, big corporate entities that new people go to. Now I see so many new licensed, so many new bar uh, members um, come on their own and having to learn the business, bookkeeping, taxes, accounting, all that. And then, you know, uh, paralegal services, estate planning software, all those different things cost money. So it looks like you put together the suite of that. And I guess attorneys then can use you for a fee and, and kind of fall under your umbrella. That, that looks like a fascinating business. So that's Mott Legal. So again, anybody here on the call, if you're a realtor or investor working with an attorney, this is something you might bring to an estate planning attorney to offer value to them. They can check it out for free. They don't have to sign up, but at least it shows you're learning about their business and trying to help. Yeah. And then I have a YouTube channel for Mott Legal, you know, where I, I share information there for, um, I, I have a lot of um, real estate investors, I, I would say. And the, the, you guys are my people, right? I, I feel like we're the same type of crazy, right? Uh, <laughs> so, um, um, but yeah, the, the goal for Mott Legal, like, I've had associate attorneys, I've had partners, and then now I, I really streamlined, streamlined my business to be efficient where I had the tools to run myself. But the goal for Mott Legal is to bring in other attorneys in, in, other, um, in other places, right? So everyone's their own business. It's kind of like, would you rather go to an Applebee's or would you rather go to a neighborhood restaurant where the owner is in the kitchen cooking? So that type of concept, you know, I, I want to give those... Um, those owners, all the, the tools they need to have an awesome kitchen. Got it. Now, I, I know that you have CLA, Continuing Legal Education Requirement classes. Are those just for Arizona or do you offer that for California as well? So uh, let's see, where'd you go? I lost you on my screen there. Um, I recorded them in Arizona and, and that's where they took place. So the way it works in Arizona is um, they're, they're recommended to be approved. Um, Let's see, where did, where did you guys go? I can FaceTime. And then, um, and then in California, um, you, you, can see if it, you can see if it works there. So basically, if, if people attend, I can, I can give them the certificate and Got prove it. they were in attendance. And it should work for their state as well, too. Got it. So I don't, um, I don't know where you went on my screen. Am I, am I still there? I can still hear you. But, uh, it, should, it should be in the spotlight. Um, uh, I see. So, I have too many so, things yeah. open. <laughs> um, here, question is, how does Arizona probate law differ from California law regarding the forms and public administrator, and public uh, press representatives? So Arizona is a lot easier, I would say. So Ca California, sorry, I'm still looking. I'm, I got so many tabs open. I'm closing things. I'm not sure where you uh, Don't close the Zoom. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I, 
I don't know where it went. So in, in California, you always have to have a hearing before someone is appointed. And in California, you have to get what's called a probate referee to value the property. And, and then you, um, they want to see the house sold for retail, or you got to explain why you didn't sell it for retail. And in California, there's also a hearing uh, before they close the probate on all probates. Arizona, the process is a lot more simplified. Usually we can do what's called an informal probate, where if they're in agreement of who's going to serve as a personal representative, we can file all the paperwork and get the authority without a hearing, you know, so we don't have to wait for a hearing and you know, go through all that. So it can go a lot faster. Um, in Arizona, we still have to publish after they're appointed and start a four month creditor period. Uh, you know, California also has that as well too, or, or very similar. Um, yeah, there's just more requirements in California, I would say, because it always requires a hearing to open and close. And um, um, all these counties can be kind of picky. They can be picky in Arizona, too. We had one recently get returned. It said loose papers was the reason. <laughs> and, and I was like, what? They, um, um, I was like, they, they mailed this back to us. They, they paid to mail this back. My paralegal reminded me that we provide the mail we provided the paid postage thing, so they dropped it back in our own thing. It said they don't like loose papers, so we need a, a staple in that county. Um, um, ca California is more of that, I would say, like the wrong color cover sheet, yeah, uh, the wrong yeah. font, and it gets rejected. Um, <laughs> no, that's 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 funny. Um, yeah, the loose papers, hand up there. we had a good uh. No, I, I, I get that. I mean, I, I can see Hi. that. Makes... Hey, Hannah, what's going on? I have a question. Hi, how are you? I'm a real estate agent, and uh, my husband's best friend from high school had passed away. Originally, the parents had a living trust. The husband and the wife had a living trust. And the daughter doesn't know where the trust is at. They can't find it or, or the mom. So somebody told her that she needed to go through a probate lawyer. What what happens now? How can we get a hold of a, getting a copy of that trust? We don't know who that lawyer is. The question so is it is anything titled in that trust? Would be my first question. What the assets mortgage, are we talking about? Not one house that they own is the, the, under a trust. Okay, so there is a one house under the trust. Correct. And what's the situation? Are they both alive, or did someone pass away? The father passed away. The mother is still alive. And the beneficiaries are as the wife and the two children. Um, I told them you have a living trust. You don't need a probate lawyer. Is that correct? In yeah, California. What, what, what state is this in? California. California. Okay. So yeah, the, um, I, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to find on my, my I, I still can't see it. When I do a view, it, it shows up. I, maybe it thinks I'm on a third screen. Sorry. I'm it's okay. Distracted. Technology. Yeah, it's always something. Yeah, as much as I, much as I love it. So, um, uh, what, what, what is she wanting to do? She just doesn't have a copy of the trust. What, what is she wanting to do with the house right now? That's exactly right. They don't know where the copy of the trust is. The mom does not remember the lawyer that they went to together when they did the living trust. Um, I told them if you, they want to move in the house. They don't want to sell it. But right now, currently, the dad had somebody living with her. Because the parents were had with him before they before he died because he wasn't getting along with his wife, so she so they divorced. So the lady now doesn't want to move out. The children are trying to move back in the house, and this lady doesn't want to leave and giving them a very difficult time. In California law moratorium. We don't know. She doesn't know what to do. This is all recent. Um, okay, so sorry, I'm just kind of. So we have a person living there, not paying the mortgage, not paying the rent, nothing. She's basically a California squatter. Uh, okay, so then you're gonna have to go through the process of, of giving her evicted. That's it, right? Yeah, and then, but um, so it, it's owned by a trust. Correct. So, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really just trying to get this up. I don't know. Uh... I got two screens and uh, 
I'm on a Mac and it, it just it, it minimized it somewhere. Mm. So um, um what yeah. do you suggest for her to do? I told her most likely because they are the owners of the house, the mom is still the owner of the house, she's on the trust, she's on um it's under the trust name. He never did anything with the trust before he died. And the difficult thing is the lady that's living there is giving him a very difficult time. She told so, them. So, yeah. so, mom, so mom's still alive, right? The surviving spouse is still alive. The other trustee. Yes. yes. Um, but someone else is living in this house that she needs to uh, get rid of. Yes. So, yes. Um, so, so they need to like administer the trust is what I would say, right? They need to prove that she is the trustee, right? Just so mm -hmm. that they have the authority to, um, to start the eviction process. So they need to do what to the trust because they can't find their original trust. Yeah. So, so I've been uh, this situation, Bill brings up a, an idea which I've used, which is look on the recorded documents. Sometimes the law firm name will appear on. We did. Um, I pulled up the deed that okay. was the mor the mortgage deed. It didn't. It just says his name and the trust. That's all it says. It doesn't say who's the person who signed it, who's the who's the attorney or anything. So I've I've the way I've dealt with this is um, you know, again, it's the attorney answer. It depends on the situation and other things, but you know, but but how we create the trust. So um I if if I know enough where it's a revocable trust, where it sounds like it is, she would have the it full is. authority, even if we found it, right? Yeah, it's so, a revocable trust. So we can do so the way I saw this before is they do a new restatement. They restate a new trust with the same name and same original date as the new one. So that way when you when you sell it, you can show title, you can say, here it is, here's the trust. It was originally created in this date, but as restated in 2022. And do the normal eviction to get that lady out after that's done correct yeah i, I would try to start the, the eviction process as, as soon as possible now right also, yeah. it could be a while and um um but yeah the trustee um you, you're gonna need to show that she's the trustee in order to sell the house right at uh, the title company you may be mm -hmm. able to get the eviction process going right now i think there's enough to um get an eviction attorney started so i would do that asap and then um you know, someone like myself could help uh, restate the trust. And that's what I do. How much is something like that would cost? Um, depends. So my, my fees usually start off about a couple thousand dollars or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, ranges from there. Okay. So I will definitely you... tell her that you have a solution that you could possibly help her and, and would definitely give her your info. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot more involved. You don't do part of the eviction. Do you, is that include the eviction process or no? No, I, I would get a specific eviction attorney uh, in that county. And usually it starts with just giving notice, right? As the first requirement, you just give notice um, that they need to leave. You've written notice. Written notice. Okay. Hannah, where's the property? And in, in California. Southern LA the County, Orange County? Southern California. If we're okay. talking offline, I have a I have a service I use. There's eviction services, and, and then I have. It's a, like in a wooden. I don't know if you're familiar with the valley. It's in Woodland Hills. Oh yeah, you should give me a call offline. I have some I can introduce you to that might be able to help you. I just use one uh, for two of my listings: one in Sherman Oaks and one in Carson. Um, okay. For squatters, as opposed to attorneys in that process, which is still almost impossible in LA County today to get somebody out if they if they're militant. There's some other options so I'll, I'll show you offline. I don't want to go into a video on, but um, if you want to give me a call offline, I'd be glad to help you with that. I don't have your number. Um, um, are you able to I, call me back whenever you're available? Well, for anybody who, why don't you take my number down? If anybody wants to call me, 310-210-0008. Number's 310-210-0008. And I'm on social media, Bill Gross EXP. You can find me on any social media there. I'm sorry, I did not get a chance to write it. 310 210 zero 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 eight okay thank you so much yeah and if you've got this yeah. if you got on this call you you probably get a couple of emails from me so you'll i'm sure you'll be able to figure out who i am um yeah. thank you though thank great question hector i see your hand thank up you've been patient um how can we help you 
let's see, Hector, I took your hand down. I need to unmute you, I guess. Sorry about that. Hector, Hector, ask to unmute. There you go. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Hector Aguilar here. Um, Bill, just um, on hindsight, along the lines of what Hannah was asking, wouldn't the grant deed show who the actual um, attorney was that uh, prepared that, that uh, living trust? Probably not. The, Probably the, not. The grant deed won't. Uses the towel company that does it on a grant okay. deed, and the mortgage, not the lender. We, we I, might, the, we no. might find the attorney's oh, name if um, they had it returned to the attorney's office after recorded. So after Usually, recorded, it, it could have been sent back to the attorneys, but but not all the time. The, the place where I find it sometimes is uh, the notary. Um, that sometimes the notary is the mortgage lender. And there's a clue there. And then the other one is sometimes the notary is in the attorney's office. So if they provide the document of the certification of the trust on that document, that notary is often an employee, traditionally has been an employee of the attorney. It's a little less common now, but more common in the past. Yeah, that, that's the second place I would look. If I didn't see it recorded on the information, I would Google the notary. I would see who yeah. the notary is and then Google them and see if you can find. Good, thanks. Thanks for the question, Hector. Um, I got a question from Michael. This is this is such a classic. Michael, are you a real estate agent or are you a um, are you a investor? What's your role? Let me see if I can. Un, un, uh, Michael's still around. Michael Lund, there you are. Ask to unmute. Michael, are you a real estate agent or are you an investor? I'm an investor preparing to be a real estate agent as well. I'm uh, following the the Chad Corbett uh, advice. Oh man! So if you ask that question to Chad, he's going to throw something at you. Uh -oh. <laughs> like, so Ross, we got this question. Um, imagine I'm standing in an attorney office with a box of donuts, okay, or cookies or whatever croissants. Uh, Relis is a little more bougie than uh, donuts, I think. You got to come in with hey, a hey anything more? Yeah, but, hey, it's all good. <laughs> no, I think he had, if I went to your office, I'm bringing a croissant or some sort of a. Uh, but anyhow, whatever. Um, what do most investors or agents say at this point? How can I differentiate myself? What do I say to paralegal to convey that I'm here to help? I'm going to give you an answer and then I'm going to ask you for an answer. My answer is going to be, if you just did that like all day for like a week, you'll figure it out. I was in the mortgage industry and we, when we started the business, we used to go to real estate offices every day. And my job was just eight hours a day to go and meet people, say hi, learn how to start a conversation. And if you ask me, what did I say? I don't know, but you kind of figure it out when you do it. This is the question that people ask before they start. And I would say, just go in and make a friend. Ross, what would you say? If somebody walked in your office with uh, some nice fresh croissants or something? Yeah, so A, they, um, they still wouldn't find me. They, they still exactly. wouldn't be able to, to talk to me. But um, I, I would see their uh, donuts or croissants or whatever they left. So I, what, what you would say, I think the goal would be is to try to figure out who their, um, their probate paralegal is and not try to get in front of the attorneys and talk to them. Uh, I, I get texts all the times that, hey, can you call me when, when you have a minute? I, I don't. I don't have a minute. No. I, um, I, I would love to get coffee with all the people and lunches and, and all the things, but it's just there's. Um, so I, I would say the goal should be not to talk to the attorney. And, you know, again, that, that's your greater goal. But if you go into the office with you just want to have a good contact with um, with their gatekeepers, really. Right. And just leave something for for the probate paralegal and, and you don't want to disrupt them. And then they may ask you questions, right? You know, if, if you go with like, yeah, I just, I just want to leave this, you know, then they, are, um, they may ask you other things and you can go from there. But if you're just, you don't have to be good, just do it, right? If you're a warm body and just nice, especially if you go in with, with something sweet, like um, that's, that's more than half the battle, just, um, just, just uh, I, I don't know, just don't look like an idiot, you know, just don't. Uh... Now, I would recommend dress like an attorney, wear a suit and a tie, if you're coming to the office, look professional, don't come in in jeans, uh, don't disrupt people who are working, I would say also, having worked in law offices in my in my lifetime. Um, and and I think the, the goal is the relationship, it's not the referral, you're not going to get a referral the first time you walk in the door, but if you're a resource, uh, get them to call you. One of the things I get asked by paralegals is, for copies of documents, right? Well, I have a, I have a, a virtual assistant who'll, who pulls stuff all the time and we send documents to attorneys. And I've had paralegals say, oh, I'm sorry to bother you. And I said, I live to have you request documents for me. That's really what I want more than anything in the world. So um, that's how I approach that. Um, okay, and then, um, 
some of the suggestions about the grant deed. Okay, it seems like trust would have to evict the squatter. Yeah, uh, yes, did we talk about that? Personal tab, okay, okay fine. Um, uh, uh, regardless, we need some, some technical support. Alt tab, you should be able to rotate your open screens. Alt, alt those, tab? Yeah, no, I don't on, have a on, Mac. On a Mac? Yeah. So tab, you, where's so, alt? I see tab. There's an I alt button. I, I double tapped and it shows it in a preview, but I'm not sure where it's hiding it to. And it's <laughs> um, it's not Zoom because Zoom will open up a new window, but whatever. I got like a preview where I can see it. Okay. But um, Amy says, I just booked an appointment with a probate attorney whose name is showing up in most of my probate leads. Wow. I listed one of his cases and sent him emails with no response. So I called his office and asked for an appointment. They charge $60 for the 30 minute appointment. I don't mind paying the $60. But I get to discuss with him um, what I do face to face, and then bring cookies for him and the receptionist to help to get some probate cases. I like that concept. I would pay sixty bucks to sit with most. No, or is he gonna be pissed? Is he gonna look at that that time as uh, I'm looking for a big case and I'm not looking to work for sixty dollars? Yeah, um, that'd be me. I, I don't do you know hourly rate stuff. So I really booked it, and, I, and mean, I, I, I want to be straightforward of, of why well, you're there. And again, I, I, my, my team would, would try to screen that out a little bit more. You'll be clear what you're doing. You know, like, you know, the, if you be clear who you are and what you're doing, because if you're, if you're willing to pay $60 to, to see them, you know, that, that's for a legal client, right? That, that's for a legal client. He charges $60 for someone looking to hire him. If you're going there, you're, you're looking to get hired yourself, right? So he he doesn't he doesn't want to um you know get paid sixty dollars to hear your sales pitch. Sixty dollars sounds like a lot, but one hundred twenty dollars an hour rate for an attorney is very low, right? There's, there's, I don't know any attorney who's going to bill at that rate. Probably attorneys in probably LA County are going to bill I think at three or four dollars an hour or more if they're specialized and things like that. So um, I, yeah, I, definitely that's a discount. They're doing that rather than for free just to weed out people who aren't serious probably. So I, yeah, that's a good point, Robert. Oh, yeah, so I, I just be straight up of, of what you're doing, and um, and but, if, if if you have a client, right? If if you have someone with, with a legal need going that way, perfect. But if you just want to say, "Hey, I'm a realtor. I'm I'm the best. I can help you." Um, yeah, I, I get I get lots of those every week. Amy, I'd love for you to to go and report back. Tell us how it worked. You know, or tell me privately and keep it a secret, but I, I, I'm interested. I, I think it's a, it's a, you know, look, you're creative. I'll give you that. You're, you're ambitious. I'll give you that. So, uh, but it just depends on the attorney, right? It, it could work in the right situation yeah, and, yeah. and timing and, and all of those things. But, but right now my, my schedule is packed. Um, and I, I want things, you know, qualified a little bit before they're on my calendar. It took me to get qualified to get to you. I got to tell you, your stuff definitely <laughs> put me through the ringer. <laughs> but I was determined once I'd seen some of your videos. Um, I'm getting now a technical support command tab on a Mac. Command tab. You Mac people, I don't know. Okay, that, that's the preview mode I'm in. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, oh, okay. Well, Amy said she can provide some clients. Look, I think one of the ways you can bring the people I talked about was estate planning. Most probate attorneys love doing estate planning. And if you're able to refer clients for sure, uh, I would do that. Best way, guaranteed. They'll, they'll, um, they want new clients. So, And then can a probate lawyer take a case on one house even though um, there's a living trust? Yes. Um, can they charge hourly if they do not tell them from the beginning? Um, with that... I'll, there's more to that question, I think, but nobody can charge anybody anything without telling them about it. What are the requirements for an attorneys for disclosing fees up front? You need a written fee agreement. You need a written fee agreement. Yeah. Signed, and agent. then it's got to be signed by, by both parties. Some of the real estate agents, we need a contract that's signed. There's no, you can't hold somebody financially to something that's not in writing. So I'm not sure. There are attorneys that give free consultations, uh, but they don't want to give free consultations to realtors to solicit them for business. So um yeah somebody's saying that two attorneys they use in central california charge 350 an hour for probate yeah that sounds more like it i would say 350 la county is probably more expensive i think the i think the county approved rates like four something but their attorneys would charge eight hundred thousand dollars an hour if you're a specialist in you know working conservatorships and in guardianships they charge you know a lot more per hour <laughs> okay people haven't thought that okay hannah i think we answered your question 
Thank you. Any, I don't see any other questions up unless I'm missing them. We're getting, well, actually, we're, the hour is up. Well, as time really flew by here. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Ted, this is fun. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I, I love um, these types of communities. So, um, you know, any way I, I can help, hope, hope you guys found this information helpful. But so much opportunities for attorneys. Um, I hope I didn't, didn't totally scare you away from, from attorneys. It's just, um, I, I want you to actually get in there, right? And I want you to be an asset on their team. Uh, so just be clear while you go in there. there. There's lots of ways that you can lead with value. And I, I think if you don't have a client just going with some donuts or something sweet, look for the, the paralegal and um, to, just have a good contact that way. Find out the attorney's interest and invite them. I, there's a train that I went to chase down and he was a huge Laker fan. So what do you think I did? I called him up and took him to a Laker game. He's not going to say no to good tickets. So but you better make it something special. So, okay, guys, look, uh, Matt Legal is the uh, resource he has for attorneys that you might want to learn about to bring to your attorneys to help them build out their estate planning practice. And then realestand.com is a website to reach him in other channels. Really appreciate having you on here. He's an attorney both in Arizona, primarily physically, and in California, which is a unique opportunity if you get some cases to refer across that way. Uh, I'm Bill Gross. I'm a real estate broker here in LA, Bill Gross EXP. Um, we do this every Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We also stream it live on YouTube and Facebook, and we record it. If you register, we'll send you a link. Come on the live Zoom call. You can participate or uh, ask questions on the social medias, and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much, Rylos. A lot of fun. Thank you so much.